The Battle of Agincourt, fought on October 25, 1415, stands as one of the most renowned and significant military engagements in English and French history. It occurred during the Hundred Years' War, a protracted series of conflicts waged from 1337 to 1453, primarily between the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of France. The battle is especially noted for the extraordinary use of the English longbow, the decisive leadership of King Henry V, and the severe impact on the French nobility, which was marred by overconfidence and tactical missteps. The event's legacy has been immortalized by William Shakespeare in his play Henry V, which has shaped the cultural memory of Agincourt for centuries. The roots of the Hundred Years' War lay in a complex web of feudal claims and political machinations. It began primarily as a dispute over the rightful succession to the French throne. The death of Charles IV of France in 1328, without a male heir, led to a crisis of succession. Edward III of England, as a grandson of Philip IV of France through his mother, Isabella, claimed the French crown. However, the French nobility preferred Philip VI of the House of Valois, leading to Edward III's formal claim to the throne in 1337 and the onset of war. The conflict was characterized by intermittent battles, truces, and shifts in power. England initially gained significant ground, especially with victories at battles like Crecy, 1346, and Poitiers, 1356. However, by the early 15th century, the tide seemed to be turning in favor of France, bolstered by internal consolidation and the efforts of leaders such as Bertrand du Guesclin and Charles V. Henry V ascended the English throne in 1413, inheriting a kingdom fraught with internal strife and discontent. Aiming to solidify his rule and distract from domestic issues, Henry revived England's claim to the French throne. In 1415, he launched an ambitious campaign across the English Channel, seizing upon a moment of relative weakness and division within France. The campaign began with the siege of Arfleur, a strategic port city. Despite taking longer than anticipated, the English forces eventually captured Arfleur. However, the siege had depleted Henry's forces and exposed his men to disease, significantly reducing their numbers. Despite these challenges, Henry decided to march his army towards Calais, a fortified English enclave, aiming to demonstrate his resolve and military prowess. On October 25, 1415, near the village of Agincourt, Henry V's exhausted and outnumbered forces encountered a much larger French army. The French, confident in their numerical superiority, anticipated an easy victory. Estimates suggest the English army numbered around 6,000, while the French fielded between 15,000 to 30,000 troops. The English longbow was a crucial factor in the outcome of the battle. This weapon, with a range of up to 250 yards and capable of penetrating armor at close distances, had already proven its effectiveness in previous conflicts. The English archers, positioned strategically on the flanks and protected by sharpened stakes, unleashed a devastating hail of arrows that decimated the French ranks. The longbow's effectiveness lay not only in its range and power, but also in the rapidity with which skilled archers could fire. English archers could shoot up to 10 to 12 arrows per minute, creating a continuous barrage that disrupted and demoralized the French forces even before they could engage in close combat. The French approach to the battle was marred by overconfidence and poor planning. The French nobility, eager to capture or kill Henry V and reclaim their lost prestige, crowded their knights and men-at-arms into a narrow battlefield, hemmed in by woods on either side. This lack of space severely hampered their mobility and ability to maneuver. As the French advanced, they were funneled into a bottleneck, making them easy targets for the English archers. The muddy ground, churned up by the preceding day's rain, further impeded their progress. Heavily armored knights struggled to advance through the mire, becoming bogged down and vulnerable to the relentless arrows and eventually the English infantry's counterattacks. The battle resulted in a catastrophic defeat for the French. Estimates of French casualties vary, but suggest that thousands of French soldiers were killed, including many high-ranking nobles and knights. The English, by contrast, suffered relatively few casualties. Henry V's forces, through a combination of strategic acumen and effective use of the longbow, had managed to achieve a stunning victory against overwhelming odds. The immediate aftermath of the battle saw Henry V ordering the execution of several thousand French prisoners. 
This controversial decision was driven by practical concerns. His army was still vulnerable, and he feared a renewed French attack. However, it also underscored the brutal realities of medieval warfare. The victory at Agincourt significantly bolstered Henry V's position both at home and abroad. It led to a wave of support for his rule in England and reinforced the legitimacy of his claim to the French throne. In France, the defeat exacerbated internal divisions and weakened the nobility, leading to a period of turmoil and instability. In 1420, the Treaty of Troyes formalized Henry V's successes. The treaty recognized Henry as the heir and regent of France, stipulating that he would inherit the French crown upon the death of Charles VI. This arrangement, however, was short-lived. Henry V died unexpectedly in 1422, just two years after the treaty, followed by Charles VI shortly thereafter. The infant Henry VI inherited both thrones, but his reign would be marked by renewed conflict and the eventual resurgence of French fortunes under leaders like Joan of Arc. The Battle of Agincourt has been immortalized in literature, most notably by William Shakespeare in his play, Henry V. Written around 1599, the play is part of Shakespeare's second historical tetralogy, which includes Richard II, Henry IV, Part I, and Henry IV, Part II. Henry V serves as the culmination of this series, portraying the young king's maturation from a wayward prince to a charismatic and inspiring leader. Shakespeare's depiction of Agincourt is both dramatic and patriotic, emphasizing themes of honor, duty, and the burdens of kingship. The famous St. Crispin's Day speech, delivered by Henry before the battle, has become one of the most celebrated passages in English literature. In it, Henry rouses his troops with the promise of eternal glory and camaraderie, transforming the grim reality of the battlefield into a scene of heroic valor. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. Shakespeare's portrayal of Henry V as a model of kingship and leadership has significantly shaped the cultural memory of both the king and the Battle of Agincourt. The play underscores the tension between the harsh necessities of war and the ideals of chivalry and justice, reflecting the complexities of Henry's character and reign. The Battle of Agincourt's impact resonated far beyond the immediate military and political consequences. It reinforced the importance of infantry and innovative tactics in medieval warfare, challenging the traditional dominance of heavily armored knights. The battle also highlighted the potential of smaller, well-disciplined forces to overcome larger, less cohesive armies, a lesson that would be revisited in numerous conflicts throughout history. In the broader context of the Hundred Years' War, Agincourt marked the peak of English fortunes. Although England's territorial gains in France were significant, they proved difficult to maintain in the long term. The resurgence of French national identity, spurred by figures like Joan of Arc, and the internal weaknesses of the English monarchy, ultimately led to the war's conclusion in favor of France by 1453. The Battle of Agincourt remains a landmark in the annals of military history, emblematic of the valor and strategic ingenuity of Henry V and the effectiveness of the English longbowmen. The French defeat, driven by overconfidence and tactical errors, underscored the changing dynamics of medieval warfare. The battle's legacy, preserved through the lens of Shakespeare's Henry V, continues to inspire and inform historical and cultural narratives. Agincourt's significance lies not only in its immediate outcomes, but also in its enduring influence on the perception of leadership, warfare, and national identity.